Mysterious underwater creatures that only exist in the Mariana Trench. And we're starting things off with the anglerfish. These are deep sea predators known for their distinctive bioluminescent lure that hangs in front of their mouths. In the Mariana Trench, various species of anglerfish have been identified, and they're all pretty unsettling to look at. These fish use their glowing lure to attract prey in the darkness of the trench. They have sharp teeth and expandable stomachs, allowing them to actually consume prey sometimes larger than themselves. They're adapted to survive in the extreme pressure conditions with their bodies designed to withstand the crushing depths of the deep. Next up we have the vampire squid. Pretty clear how these things got their name. It looks like it's wearing your classic like Halloween-y vampire type cape. A uh, Batman squid would have been a good nickname for this thing too. These things are actually not true squids, but they belong to a distinct group of cephalopods. The vampire squid has a gelatinous body covered in photophores, which can emit bioluminescent light. It also possesses webbing between its arms, which creates that cloak-like appearance. This allows the squid to control its buoyancy in the water column. These things also have a really cool defensive mechanism. They can turn themselves inside out, covering their body with like spines, creating a very frightening display to frighten off any potential predators. I certainly wouldn't want to take a bite out of that. Number eight, giant isopods. The giant isopod is a crustacean that inhabits the Mariana Trench and other deep sea environments. They kind of look like an oversized pill bug. These things can reach lengths of over 16 inches. Thank God they're designated for uh, deep sea environments. I've always thought potato bugs are actually kind of cute, uh, but they wouldn't be if they were 16 inches long. Uh, do not have time for that thing to be scuttling around my apartment. Giant isopods are scavengers feeding on the remains of dead animals that sink to the trench floor. Their slow metabolism allows them to survive on limited food resources in the deep sea environment. And at number seven, we have the Dumbo octopus. The Dumbo octopus is a unique cephalopod named for its ear-like fins resembling the ears of, uh, of Dumbo, the elephant. These things are really goofy and strange looking, but also oddly cute. I, I get how they got their name. Unlike other octopuses, Dumbo octopuses have a gelatinous mantle and lack ink sacs. They rely on their ear-like fins uh, for movement, gracefully gliding through the water. They're large, sensitive eyes are adapted for low light conditions in the deep sea. Next up, we have the Gigantactus and Bathalthema squid. The Mariana Trench is home to various species of deep sea squid, including the Giganticus and Bathalthema. These squid have unique adaptations for surviving in the extreme conditions of the trench. They have large, light-producing organs and elongated bodies. Their appearance can be a bit unsettling with like long, thin tentacles and huge eyes adapted for that low light. They're also very skilled hunters using their bioluminescence to attract their prey in the darkness of the deep. At our number five spot, we have the deep sea dragonfish. This is a group of bioluminescent fish found in the Mariana Trench. Uh, good Lord, what kind of twisted nightmare did these things slither out of. This thing looks like the hallway monster from Hellraiser. These guys have long fang-like teeth and these elongated bodies, incredibly menacing, sort of like, almost like a piranha and a, and a serpent fused together. Dragonfish use their bioluminescence to attract prey and communicate with each other in the darkness of the trench. They are well adapted to the extreme pressure conditions down there and have specialized light-producing organs along their bodies. Next on the list is the fangtooth fish. You can clearly see how this thing got its name. Uh, these fish are horrifying. They are small, only reaching about six inches, but it has that fearsome set of jaws and a pair of dead white eyes, making for a pretty intimidating little guy. It's almost like a zombie fish, like one of the deadites from Evil Dead. Plus, those teeth are so large that the fangtooth can't actually close its mouth completely. It's adapted well to the extreme pressures of the deep, giving it a robust skeleton and a dark complexion, allowing for camouflage in the darkness of the deep ocean. These things are opportunistic predators feeding on other small fish and invertebrates. 
Number three, the barrel eye fish. The barrel eye fish is a very unique but somewhat eerie looking creature found in the Mariana Trench. Its nickname is the Spookfish, and you can probably see why. At first glance, it looks like its eyes are on the front, uh, but they aren't. That's, I think that's its nose. It has a transparent head, and through this transparency, you can see this pair of glowing orbs. Those are its eyes. Really weird. These eyes are highly sensitive, but they allow the barrel eye to detect the faint silhouettes of prey that are swimming above, while a transparent shield protects its vision from debris. This adaptation is super important for this thing. In the deep sea, limited light makes detecting prey very challenging. In at number two, we have the deep sea hatchet fish. Such a cool looking fish, but very strange at the same time. Uh, thank God they're so small. The deep sea hatchet fish is a family of small deep sea fish that can be found in the Mariana Trench. They have this distinct like hatchet shaped body. Their downward facing mouths and upward facing eyes make them well suited to the dimly lit conditions of the deep ocean. These fish are capable of adjusting the intensity of their bioluminescence, using it for both communication and to attract prey. They almost look metallic though, like, like all chromed out. Really, really cool. Finally, at our number one spot, we have the frilled shark. The frilled shark is considered a living fossil, being known for having almost prehistoric features with their long, eel-like body, distinctive fringed gill slits, and a mouth full of these needle-like teeth. Their physical characteristics are likely the result of a lineage that extends far, far back in the evolutionary history. These sharks are adept hunters capable of swallowing prey whole due to their long, flexible jaws. These creatures can reach up to seven feet in length. So yeah, they're not the size of a megalodon or anything, but an eel with the jaws of a shark and as, as tall as the big show, uh, scary enough for me.